All right, guys, let's get started here. Um, this is a webinar of uh, becoming a machine learning engineer. Um, so a little bit about my background. Uh, I'm a founder uh, and also a principal trainer at Elephant Scale. Uh, I teach people um, technologies like AI, uh, big data, and cloud technologies, right? By the way, sorry, my name is Suji Maniam. Should I mention that? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so when we teach these technologies to, um, uh, to people in companies like Cisco, Intuit, T-Mobile, uh, a lot of the time, you know, we get a question like, um, how do we productionize the models, right? And that's what this talk is going to cover today. Um, also, a little bit of background on me. Um, you know, I write uh, books when I have some free time. I really like open source books. So the, the one I'm working on right now is called Guided Machine Learning. Uh, this is, uh, if you are interested in learning machine learning uh, on your own, uh, this is kind of a, a kind of a, a guide that walks you through how to go about that. Right? I will give you the link um, that you can go and download this book as well. Um, I, I live in San Jose, California, and uh, you guys have seen my cat already. Uh, you will see uh, quite a few pictures of him uh, during the presentation. <laughs> so, all right, let's get started here. Um, so let's talk about machine learning briefly, right? Um, by the way, um, the um, the slides and decks are here. I will put this link on the chat window as well. And also, it's pretty simple. You can go to tinyurl.com/mlench, right? That's a link. I will put this link on the chat window as well, so you can come in here. Okay. Here's a link. So this link actually has the slides. You can download the slides. And also, let me walk you through this one real quick. Um, so the slides you can download. Uh, and also, here's a link for the guidebook uh, that I mentioned. If you're interested in learning machine learning, you can do that. So this is a program we are running. Uh, let me look at this book here. Right. So this is the uh, online book I'm writing. Uh, so it kind of walks you through how, if you're learning about machine learning, how to go about that, right? As you can see, it's, you know, section by section. It's kind of organized in a way, like imagine, uh, you know, you are learning machine learning on your own. Uh, there are a lot of books, a lot of videos, but there's a lot of content out there. Sometimes it's kind of confusing to see where do I even start, right? So this guidebook actually walks you through that. For example, let's say you want to look at, um, say, Python, you're learning Python. Uh, so you want to learn some basic visualizations, right? So if you click on this, uh, this actually walk you through very specific um, videos and articles, right? Let me say, go read this one, right? Go watch this video, right? And basically we have some exercises for you to practice what you have learned. So it's very focused learning. So I don't, get, I don't just say, uh, go read this book, right? We actually give you very specific chapters, like for example, right? Uh, so, you know, visual section from this book, right? So anyway, so, uh, check it out. Um, you know, it's open source. Again, the link is right here in the link I just give it to you guys. It's tinyurl.com slash mlenge, right? Also, um, we meet every Saturdays uh, to discuss uh, what we have learned, kind of like a review, uh, question answer session. So if you're interested, you can sign up for this uh, using the link as well, okay? Now for this one particularly, I'm, I'm gonna be starting a new class, um, a weekly class called Machine Learning Engineering. Uh, the first batch is gonna be free. So if you're interested, uh, please sign up here. Uh, I don't have the exact starting date just yet. I'm thinking about a month or two. Uh, if you're interested, sign up here and I will email you guys when the class is running, All right? So so those, those are the, a few um, uh, logistics items, right? So if you go to, the, go to this page, you have everything. Uh, all the links and all the slides, okay? All right, so let's talk about machine learning and machine learning engineering. Now, what is machine learning? Now, machine learning is basically defined as machines learning to do things or computers learning to do things without being explicitly programmed, right? So that seems like a pretty, um, right? Pretty, um, pretty fast touch because, you know, like most of us here are programmers, we write code whether you write Java code, Python code, uh, SQL, you are actually giving instruction to the machine, right? So how is it possible so the machines can learn uh, how to do programming, right? So here's an example of, you know, how do you do spam detection, for example. So here you see I'm writing code, 
So I'm, I'm actually, you know, putting rules in place. I'm saying if, you know, this, you know, this IP address is one of these, right? Maybe spam. If the email has, you know, these words, then spam. So what I'm writing is I'm writing rules, right? One by one, over, you know, for us to kind of go and analyze a spam email. But as you can imagine, these rules can get pretty, pretty large, even hundreds or even the thousands of range, and it becomes very kind of hard to maintain them. Right? So this is actually because you know these rules we are writing manually. So in machine learning approach, what we do is we don't write rules; we actually teach algorithms. So let me show you guys um, a second. All right? So here's here's an algorithm. What I'm showing this algorithm is I'm actually showing the algorithm some spam emails. Also showing the algorithm some uh, good emails, right? So the algorithm learning patterns on both. What makes a spam? What makes a good email? Now remember, I'm not writing any rules. I'm just you know giving samples to the algorithm, right? So kind of if I want to use Legos, right? I use so kind of like I'm showing two samples. So right, let's say you know this is Legos, right? Spam, not spam, right? So so imagine algorithm learning a lot of seeing a lot of spam samples. It's also learning a lot of you know uh, non-spam samples and is learning the patterns. Once it has learned enough, then I can show it a new email and then say, what do you think, right? If the new email kind of small, looks more like spam email, the algorithm will say, yes, this is spam. The, you know, if it looks like you know, one of these good emails, it will say, yeah, this is a good email, right? So this is basically what we call model building, right? So we are not writing rules. We are actually training the algorithm to learn from the data. Right, this is basically what machine learning is. So how do we do this? Right. So basically, you know, the process involves building a model, right? And then we are testing the model also. We want to make sure the model is doing well, right? And also, when the model is ready, we deploy the model in production, right? So a lot of the data science um, is basically built focused on this. How do we build the models? And also a lot of this also happens on a small scale on like laptops and workstations, because a lot of the time these are done on small scale data. Right? Now, what does it take um, to take this model and put it in production? Right? So let's see that. This is what we have, right? So as you can see, there's a lot of steps, right? See this, this green boxes is what we just discussed, building a model. And as you can see, there's a lot more involved in taking this model into production, right? So for example, right, we are, you know, we want to train the model on large scale. So I mean, we need to, you know, we need to train them, you know, we need to update, update our uh, large scale data, usually in the cloud, right, these days. And then we train the model, right, in the cloud. And then we actually distribute the model. And once the model is running, we actually monitoring the model. How is the model doing, right? And also we are doing A-B testing. For example, let's say I have two models I want to deploy. I want to see which ones you know doing well. I want to try them both out. And also let's say I'm running say version eight of the model and we are going to deploy version nine. We want to do this um, easily and also without you know, bringing down the service, right? So we, how do we update the model to a newer version? So there's a lot of things that goes on from going from taking the model into deploying in production, right? And this whole process is called machine learning engineering. And here's a, a popular paper from Google, right? So it's actually called um, Hidden Technical Debt in Machine Learning Systems. It's a pretty nice paper. You can, you, you can read about this. You know, the link is in my PDF. So here they are, all those are describing a large scale machine learning system, right? You can sort of see all the little boxes. Where's the machine learning, right? It's actually right here, this little tiny box, <laughs> right? So if you look at this, right? The actual machine learning is a very tiny portion of the overall system, right? Because there's a lot of supporting um, um, systems you need to deploy machine learning at large scale. And that's what we are gonna talk about. So this brings us to what I call machine learning engineering. What is machine learning engineering, right? I, I sort of look at a very simple um, definition. It's basically process of taking the machine learning models to production, you know, very like a one-liner. So this involves a lot, of, you know, a lot of good software engineering practices, a lot of DevOps practices, um, and a lot of good cloud practices, right? And that's what we are gonna talk about in this, this talk. So, so who's hiring for machine learning engineers, right? So I did a search for ML engineers, right? And you can uh, see, you know, these, these are some of the job descriptions I pulled out. 
Uh, I search, I think, LinkedIn jobs and Indeed, and you can see, right? Companies like Apple, Adobe, Nvidia, right? They all, you know, these are all the job descriptions. And there are a lot, lot more of these, right? A lot of startups are hiring, a lot of big companies are hiring. There's a lot of demand for machine learning engineers. Right? So by now, right? It's basically, uh, you're like, excited. oh yeah, this is, this is something I kind of want to focus on, right? Because you see, it's a pretty, it's a, I see it as an upcoming field. Uh, there's a lot of demand for this. So let's see what it takes to become a machine learning engineer. Right? I sort of already overall put this in the four different circles. First, machine learning, you know some big data, you know some cloud, and also DevOps. Right? So four categories. Let's look at these in turn. Now, so machine learning, right? I mean, this is this is important, right? Because you know we are we are after all machine learning engineers, so we need to know machine learning. So that's the first skill I would recommend. Now, a lot of the times I get asked by people, uh, what if I want to learn machine learning, but uh, my background was software engineering, I don't know enough math. Can I still learn machine learning? Absolutely yes, right? Because even though, right, machine learning is built on a lot of, the, a lot of advanced mathematical techniques, uh, to use them, we don't need to go deeply into the math. Into the math. The algorithms are so simple now, and you know they are they are evolved pretty pretty well, right? So you can actually use them, right, without being getting too too much into the uh, into the math. So I always recommend. So don't let that hold you back, right? Um, I will start going going and learning machine learning. Uh, don't don't worry. You know, you know what if I don't know enough math? And also, um, and, and this is a, another thing I recommend is a lot of the machine learning um, books and courses they kind of start diving into the math right away. And as far as, you know, I mean, at least personally, I think, you know, that's not a great approach because that kind of loses a lot of people along the way, right? So the way we recommend machine learning, machine learning is sort of the practical use of machine learning. Now, the next thing I could ask is what's the difference between AI, machine learning, and deep learning? I, I really like this one. So I thought I'll share this with you guys. <laughs> so if it's written in Python, it's machine learning, right? If it's in PowerPoint, it's AI, right? So anyway, so I thought that was a pretty, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool definition. So let's look at the uh, more, um, right? Uh, more, uh, right? Uh, look, look, here's like sorry, AI and machine learning and deep learning. So AI is more like a thing like an umbrella term, right? So basically it's building smarter machines. Machine learning is a subset of AI, right? We use a lot, lot of the math stats models to um, uh, learn from data and predict on data, right? Deep learning is a, um, 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 specific sub subset of machine learning is getting a lot of attention these days. It uses something called neural networks, right, to um, uh, to to uh, to learn patterns and predict. Right. So these are some of the basic definitions. So when you want to learn machine learning, right, I definitely recommend you should learn both machine learning and deep learning. And I would recommend in that order as well because when you learn first machine learning first, you learn a lot of concepts, and deep learning builds on that. So I will definitely say learn machine learning first, and then go on to learn deep learning, right? So now, um, so that's that's the first circle, ML, right? So let's look at next, next skill, which is cloud, right? So that's the you know, next circle here, right? So pretty much these days, you know, right? Cloud has changed uh, how we do compute. And it's pretty common to see companies, um, you know, really big and, you know, small uh, going to cloud in one form or another, right? Because if you're on the cloud, it's very easy to get started. There's no 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 big infrastructures you need to set up, right? And you can simply you know right, swipe your credit card and get started. And you only pay for services we use. And pretty much you know clouds can accommodate unlimited scale, scale if you really need that, right? So so cloud cloud is a pretty exciting way to do machine learning. Now so let's say how do we go from our laptop to cloud? So imagine, you remember that we talked about model building exercise. A lot of this model building is done on the laptop, at least at the initial stage. So I mean, I'm, I'm trying a new model, I'm testing with some small data, and you know, I'm still running on my laptop, you know, which can only do a small, right, small scale. Uh, and when you want to go large scale, we usually, you know, machine learning engineers get involved, right? Let's say I'm going from laptop to the cloud. That's when a lot of the machine learning engineers come in because they have the skills for uh, cloud and distributed environment, right? So which cloud should we use? Right? And you can pretty much, you know, I mean, the three public major clouds are Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and pretty much all of them have very good um, 
uh, very good machine learning capabilities. And uh, sometimes I get asked a lot of the time, uh, which cloud should I learn first? I would say, you know, whichever one you, you guys are using right now is fine, right? Learn one, because a lot of the times these skills are very transferable. Like for example, uh, you know, personally, I learned Amazon, uh, Amazon Cloud first, right? Um, because my company runs on Amazon Cloud and now we use a lot of Google Cloud and the concepts are pretty, pretty straightforward. Like and I can easily go from one to the other because I know what I'm looking at. It's just, you know, different APIs and different, you know, different UIs, but the concepts are the same, right? So, so you don't need to kind of learn all three clouds, just learn one reasonably well, and you will see your skills are very transferable. And another thing I recommend is to learn cloud, um, look for some, you know, some of, the, some of the deals they give you. For example, I know Google Cloud uh, gives you $300 credit, right, when you sign up. So that's not bad, right? You, you sign up, you get the credit. You used to learn, uh, you, know, le you know, learn the Google Cloud. Right? So definitely recommend. So look for deals, and like I said, you know, learn one well, and uh, you know, and you will do well on the others. Right? So that's cloud. Now, next up, uh, next next skills I would recommend is learning some about big data and distributed computing. Because as you can imagine, right? You know, when you learn large scale model, we we, we think about large scale data. So for example, right, let's say I'm training with one gig data on my laptop and that takes you know, one hour to train. But what if I, you know, I didn't train on one terabyte of data? So this I definitely cannot do to my laptop, right? So at this point we go to cloud and usually we use the distributed systems to help us learn. So for example, in this slide I'm showing you um, sort of a laptop to the cluster uh, migration, right? So you can see on a laptop, you know, we have small scale data. We do small scale training, right? And you know, in a, right when you go to clusters, right, you can see our data usually gets distributed across many many machines. And also, when you run the computation, it's also get distributed across many many machines. Right? So, so what you're doing is you, you know, let's say I'm training an algorithm. The algorithm runs on many machines in parallel, right? And that's the beauty of distributed computing. Now, how do we achieve this? There are a few ways of doing this. One, one of the most popular ones is called Apache Spark, right? So Spark is a open source uh, distributed computing platform, very popular. And also it has, um, uh, Spark has a lot of machine learning algorithms built in as well. So you can actually um, you know, go to you know, use Spark and start using the algorithms because they already implemented right? out of the box, which is pretty great. And the good news is uh, Apache Spark, you can run on your laptop. And also it's supported very well on all the cloud platforms. So you have, you know, if you're programming in Spark, you're pretty, you know, you're pretty portable across any cloud platform, which is nice. Or you can choose other cloud vendors as well. For example, Amazon has Lambda, right? Which is basically a serverless computing. When you write code and they will run the code for you. Uh, Google has BigQuery, right? So pretty much all the cloud vendors have some mechanism uh, for scalable processing. Just a matter of finding out, you know, um, you know what they are and how to use them, right? So here I'm showing us both, right? So like a cloud neutral way, say Apache Spark, and also you know a cloud specific way, you know AWS or Google, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure Microsoft has their own as well. Does that make sense, guys? Right? So distributed computing, meaning you know how to do it in cloud, and because this is the first reason we are going to the cloud in the first place, right? For scale. Okay. So let's say. We train the model. Now, how do we deploy the model? So this is called model serving. So what we're doing is, right? So typically the way it's done is like this. We build package a model into a container. So think like a Docker container or something, right? And then we deploy the, we actually register the container uh, into what we call a container registry. So this is usually, uh, could be something like Docker Hub or it could be like in you know, all the cloud vendors have their own registries as well, right? So your container is registered. And then the system will basically take this image and deploy that onto multiple nodes, as you can see, right? So here I am, look at this purple circles. So I'm deploying this cloud, uh, sorry, the application on four nodes, right? And usually we have a load balancer in front of this. And then basically you know, whenever a request comes in, right? Let's say I have a model to do predict house prices, for example, right? Um, so you know somebody's sending in a new house, you know house house uh, info like you know this many bedrooms, this many bathrooms, what's the price? Right? So the request comes in, and the load balancer will take the request and then bounce it to one of the nodes. 
and then our model will respond and the answer will go back, right? So almost think like a web service, um, right? We are deploying, but at scale. But what's powering the power in this is basically a model underneath. Mm -hmm. Now here, there are a few things I need to take care of. For example, um, what if one of these nodes crashes? Then I need to spin up a replacement node for that, right? Because if, if you know, because in the cloud, you know, things happen, machines crash. So if in, in case I lose a node, I need to spin up a machine to you know replace the existing one. What if my requests are increasing? Well, let's say my service is very popular, right? And uh, my load is kind of going up. So I need to spin up more machines to serve the request. How do you do this, right? Now these are all, you know, if you want to do this manually, this is a lot of work, but luckily for us, there's software that will do this for us. And that's basically called Kubernetes, right? And that brings me to my next skill set, which is DevOps. You guys have probably heard about, you know, Docker, Kubernetes, right? And I'm throwing in something called Kubeflow, right? So let me talk about these. So Docker is basically the way to package applications. It's a very, very lightweight and very, very portable format. So when you package an application into a Docker container that can be deployed in pretty much any cloud platform. So what Kubernetes does is takes the Docker containers and deploys and manages containers. For example, here in the room of the previous one I showed you guys, this is all done by Kubernetes, meaning taking the Docker container, deploying them onto machines, right? Doing load balancing, you know, when a machine dies, spinning up a new machine, all that. Right? All that is done by Kubernetes, which is pretty cool. Right? And the good news is Kubernetes is supported pretty much by all cloud, cloud vendors. Right? So once you guys know the basics of Kubernetes, you can easily deploy your application. Mm -hmm. Now there's another one called Kubeflow. This is basically Kubernetes optimized for machine learning. So because you know, in the machine learning, we have a certain workflow, right? So the Kubernetes, the Kubeflow is basically that workflow built on top of Kubernetes, which is very handy. So definitely knowing some of these will be, you know, will be very useful because like, and like I said, you know, not just deploying applications and also they provide monitoring. So you can monitor like how much traffic are you getting? Uh, what's the latency? Meaning how, you know, how quickly our, our service responding and all that. So again, these are DevOps. Again, DevOps is a huge topic. Uh, what I want you guys to focus on is learning the basics, right? Just so you know, you can be pretty effective in deploying the models. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. All right. So now, how do we how do we do all this? So I put a little learning path um, on how how someone can achieve this. For example, so starting here, I recommend definitely recommend learning some Python, right? So. Um, these days when somebody comes and asks me, I want to learn machine learning, should I, should I start by learning some advanced math? I always tell them, no, learn some Python first, right? Because Python has become a pretty much the default language in machine learning. So knowing some Python is really, really important when you're doing machine learning and deep learning. And also, even if you don't end up doing machine learning with Python, if you end up not writing a lot of machine learning code, Python is really great for everything else, right? You can write your system programming, write your scripts, you can clean up data, right? There's a lot of things you can do in Python, very versatile language. And if you look at the guide, I've given you guys some free resources uh, for you guys to learn Python. Like for example, in the, in the guide in machine learning, right? That's the first step I, um, I ask you guys to learn, right? Python basics. So again, you can sort of look, look, go through, you know, some of the section, for example, you know, how to use, you know, let's say basic, you know, basics of Python. Right. Again, some links for you guys. Right. And also, like I said, remember I said, I'm giving you chapter specifics. I say go read this chapter. Right. So I never say like go read this book. I always say you know go read this chapter. Very very focused learning. Right. So again, you know you can you can follow this guide. And also each um, after at the end of each guide, we have exercises for you guys to kind of you know play around with. Because um, a lot of these things, uh, you know, I had people in my class who who would say you know I watch some videos, I read books. But they will always say, you know, but I really haven't done much, much hands-on. And if you haven't done much hands-on, these things are, you know, not, not really memorable, right? So can they kind of evaporate? So I always say, yeah, reading books, watching videos is perfectly okay, right? But please do the, uh, please do as much as hands-on as you can, right? So if you look at the book, I can walk you through all that. So you can, you can take, take a look at that. 
And a lot of the links I give you here, I, I try to do as much as free resources as possible. For example, right, uh, this book I'm, I'm talking about, you know, dive into Python 3. It's an open source book. You can read it online, right? So I try to do as much as uh, free as possible. Uh, so it kind of, you know, right? You don't have to go and spend money buying other books. All right, so that's that, right? So Python is usually the first step. Then I recommend you guys learn some machine learning. Again, this guide will kind of walk you through that, right? So the guided machine learning basically, right? Uh, you can see, right? Essential machine learning, we talk about in things like feature engineering, right? Scikit libraries, regressions, classifications, all that. Okay, same thing, right? So for example, right? How do you learn, say, you know, SVM, right? So again, links, exercises, all that. So this is a very, you know, very, you know, so I'm sort of guiding you through, right? So you don't have to sort of guess and say, you don't have to sort of Google around and say, okay, what do we learn first, right? So that's why I wrote, I wrote this guide because I went through the same thing. When, because when I was learning machine learning, um, I self-learned machine learning, right? So I had to kind of do the, I did the whole thing, right? I read the books, uh, I read like, you know, watch videos, I read the blogs. Sometimes, you know, I'll read a, read a book and I'll say, aha, now I understand this. I wish I had read this book like two months ago, <laughs> right? Because they explained it so well. So I kind of, you know, learn from my experience and this is why I wrote this guide because, you know, I want you guys to kind of go, you know, right? Kind of um, learn this effectively rather than kind of wasting your time reading, you know, reading this and that. Okay. So Python first, machine learning, uh, then deep learning, right? And then I'll sort of learn some DevOps and cloud, right? For you to kind of, you know, help you work on large scale. Now, this is a pretty flexible guide. So you can pick and choose which one you guys want to learn. For example, right? Um, let's say, you know, DevOps, right? So you can just focus on learning the rest. Or let's say you know machine learning already, so you can focus on learning the rest, right? So kind of pick and choose things like Legos, right? You can yeah, you can pick and choose the modules that you're working with. So. Right, so again, um, I put the resources up. This is the same link uh, we have. So let me put this, put this uh, link again on the chat window on the Zoom, right? So this is, so this is a page I set up for you guys to, um, to um, give me one second, and I'll, I'll go through the questions, guys. Right. Um, so if you guys look at this link, right? I know some of you joined a little later. So if you look at the link here, th this is the link I have. Uh, all these then you know, all these pages set up, so you can download the um, the slides here, right? And also the the guided machine learning book I talked about. The link is here. And also, if you're interested in a you know, in a free you know upcoming free class, you can sign up for this one as well. Yeah. So that's the link, right? tinyurl.com MLH. And so it's, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I was glad you're gonna get this URL. That was pretty cool. All right. And also here are some books as well I recommend. Um, right, these are some of them. We started seeing some books coming up on the subject as well, which is great. So see, these are some of the books I would recommend. Right? So take a look at this one. All right, guys. So we are at the end of the end of the talk, and I'm I'm going to set set some time aside for, for some Q and A. Uh, I'm sure you guys have questions. So let me go through the chat window and the Q and A panel. Uh, so the basic uh, best best way to ask questions, is, guys, if you look at the Q and A panel, uh, that's a way way to ask questions. Right. So let me go through the questions right now. Um, right. Yeah. So it's <laughs> so, a I see the question about, you know, how do you, you know, what, what is this AI, ML, deep learning, right? So uh, I think we talked about this a little bit, right? Um, so again, you know, kind of, you know, just to, again, you know, the, the definitions are a little vague, I would admit. So if you go back here, right? This is kind of how I would say this. Oops, sorry, I'm going too much out. There we go, right? One second. My, sorry, my slides get off. Hold on, let me, let me stop this right here. Okay. All right. So one of the questions, like you know, understanding AI, machine learning. Uh, again, you know, honestly, you know, do do not overthink this. Uh, especially, machine learning is what I what I call classic machine learning. Right, this is your regression algorithm, classification algorithm, right? Things like this. Uh, 
deep learning is being used again you know a lot of the deep learning you know for example when you're doing a deep learning you can do same thing you can do regression and classifications but you're using a different technique so rather than doing the stat based stats based model like the machine learning um, algorithm use deep learning uses what we call neural networks right so um the way you know you're i mean just just a different the same goal but a different you right? know use of different techniques and deep learning has been pretty successful in um uh doing things like um what i call uh, image recognition right like com complex patterns things like this uh because that that has been always a little challenging in machine learning but in deep learning it's been uh, it's it's pretty much you know, almost a solved problem things like image recognition natural language processing all this stuff right so deep learning is kind of like, I, I think of it like a more like a step up right, from machine learning. So I would definitely recommend you guys learn machine learning first, understand the concepts, and then learn deep learning next. Right. So hopefully that made, uh, hopefully that made sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so, um, so the way we run this, I mean, especially when I run these, uh, you know. Um, uh, so the way we run the classes, some classes are free. So the free class I'm running right now. Right, that's basically, um, we are following this book. We meet every week, right? So there are assignments, you know, I, I give out, um, right, you know, during each week, but there's no certificate at the end because, you know, like there's almost like a self-guided thing, right? So we don't, you know, right? So, uh, but uh, a lot of the people who do this, they go on to actually apply for certification and, you know, get the certifications, right? So we don't give certificates because like I said, this is, the, this is almost like a free form class. We meet every weekly. But uh, the goal is to kind of get, you know, teach you enough so you can, you can pretty much get any certification you guys prefer, right? So yeah, so we don't do certification, but you know, if you go through and do the exercises, uh, you will know more than enough to get certified. Yeah, so um, great question. All right, uh, recording, yes. Recording will be, um, yeah, we will send out the recording of this one. Um, so question is like, are there online courses to learn Python? Yes, there are. So again, if you go to the um, go to the, the guided machine learning, uh, I have links for you guys, right? So there are a few classes I say, right? Um, right? How do how do you get started? I you know, and I, I, you know, showing us how to set up your environment, the whole works, right? And the one I I look for is look at the Python resources here. Uh, there's like a Google Python class you can take, which is free and which is pretty decent, right? And there's a lot of books that are open source that you can that you can um, read. Yeah. So again, Python is something I recommend. Um, you don't need to kind of get like an expert level. Kind of you know you can learn as you go along, right? Start with some basics, you know, just so you can write some code, understand some code, and then as you you know and as you kind of keep building on this, kind of keep learning, right? And and one thing you have to keep in mind: a lot of these learnings you have to kind of do like in parallel. <laughs> so what I mean by that is like. So we don't say, okay, go learn, you know, take, you know, three weeks, go learn Python. And then, you know, that's all you're doing. And then the next three weeks you're doing this. No, right? You gotta kind of, you know, say, okay, okay, I'm gonna just spend maybe two days learning the basics of Python. And then as you go along, you're kind of, you know, building up your Python knowledge, right? So, yeah. So don't kind of do like a waterfall model, you know, you remember the waterfall model is like, you know, do one first, then the next one and so on, right? We don't do that. So kind of like, you know, like this, I right? don't do this, right? Kind of like one first and the other one. But I want you to do like, kind of like this. See what I'm saying, right? So as you can, you know, right? So that's some overlap. So that so that's why I recommend. Right? Yeah. And look at the, look at the uh, slides for resources. Right. Very good. Um, so I, I'm I'm going through a Q and A guys, and I'll look at your chat window as well. Give me one second. Um, right. Questions like you know, uh, is there a more in depth guide? Right. So. So the, 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 the guide is actually more of an introductory level. And the reason I've done it this way is um, this guide is aimed at people who are learning machine learning for the first time, right? So, and, and, and you know, as, as already, like, you know, I mean, you know, we've been running this class for almost like almost 10 weeks now on a weekly basis, right? So there's a lot of things to learn. Once you learn the fundamentals, um, you can pretty much, you know, there are, there are books, you know, you can, you can read that go more deeper into subjects. For example, you know, things like, you know, how do you do basic regression analysis on a very detailed level, right? So those tend to, tend to get more specialized and definitely, I mean, so even though I, I don't go into this because it will be just too much, um, you can, um, you know, you can definitely find some books that really delve into the details, uh, provided you have the basics understood, 
Yeah, exactly. So consider this guide as somebody who's new to machine learning and learning this, right, for the first time. Right? And I get a lot of software engineers, a lot of data analysts, uh, you know, in this in this cohort, because it's the first time they're learning machine learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good question. Right, so, right, next question was about, you know, which cloud cloud um, vendor is, you know, sort of a machine learning. Now, this is like, a, <laughs> this is a good question and also a, a, a tough one to um, answer because honestly, more or less all of them have the same capabilities. Some of them are, you know, a little better than the others on some aspects and, and vice versa, right? So I, so the short answer would be any cloud you pick up, more or less they're the same capabilities. Um, I have been using Google Cloud lately uh, because, you know, for, you know they, they, are, they are good machine learning, uh, machine learning uh, setup. Same in AWS. Uh, I really haven't looked at Azure yet. So I am familiar with both Amazon and Google Clouds. And if you look at this, they, you know, they have pretty, you know, pretty well, you know, uh, same capabilities. I mean, some of them, you know, one will do better than the others. And, in the, the, you know, in some of them or the other will do better than this one. But yeah, right, more or less a toss up. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. I will just learn one, right? And then also uh, one of the things you can do is like, you know, if you really want to um, uh, do this officially, uh, you can also get certified in the cloud. So let's say you learn Amazon cloud and you want to get certified, right? And they had certification exams. They, they are pretty reasonably, pretty cheap. They are, you know, it's only cost like a hundred or $200 to actually sit for the exam. And you can just sit for the exam and get certified. And when you get certified, you know, that's like your batch, right? Like, hey, yes, I know Amazon cloud. I know Google cloud, right? So I will definitely think about certification on this one. And, and the certifications are basically done by the cloud vendors themselves, right? So you should go to the website and see which one you want to sign up for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. That's a great question. Uh, da, 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 what else? Let me quickly um, go through the questions, guys. Yeah, online course, we discussed that. Recording, yes. Right, so the um, uh, the the um, the link for this uh, right the resources is basically guys are right here right this is what I'm um, right so this is the link and, and in this link this tinyurlcom slash mlng right please come to this link and this one has other links right so this is the page I set up for this talk and when you guys come here right I have links for you know all the other resources right so this is the only thing you guys need let me put this link one more time in the chat window so you guys have this. All right, so look at the Zoom chat window. All right, here's the link. There we go. All right, all right, guys. So I'm gonna go through the questions very quickly. Um, Scala, uh-huh. <laughs> so uh, question is like, um, I, I, you know, I like using Scala. Uh, is it really, you know, um, um, you know, should I really switch to Python? I think that's what I'm guessing from Prasad, yeah. Um, so, Language choice is basically a personal choice, right? Some people love Scala, some people love Python. Uh, I just told, um, I'll give you a personal example. Um, uh, I just told a class for some Python developers, uh, some Scala, Scala last week. And they always said, oh man, this is, you know, this is much harder than Python. And I kind of agree with them because Scala tends to be more structured, <laughs> right? Then Py because Python is very dynamic and very easy to learn, right? So anyway, right? So uh, language choice is yours. But here's the deal. Uh, if you look at a lot of the machine learning libraries, they first come to Python, and then maybe they come to Java or Scala, right? So I recommend you still pick up some Python. Um, because a lot of the deep learning libraries we see, they first come on Python, right? So, uh, so yeah. So I, I'm not going to I'm not going to try to dissuade you from you know not using Scala. You can still use Scala. It's a very very nice language, and I I personally love it. But uh, like I said, the reality is a lot of the machine learning ecosystem is centered around Python. Right. So yeah, so I know so and if you know Scala, trust me, learning Python is very easy for you. <laughs> right. So because you already know a lot, lot of the constructs. So yeah, I'll definitely check out Python. Yeah. Good guys. So um do you have any demos uh, for the link? So look at the uh, the guidebook. I provided some demos you guys can look at, right? Yeah. And so do we need to advance math for machine learning and deep learning? Um so Here's the thing, uh, like I said, you don't need advanced math to use the algorithms. But if you're gonna write your own algorithms, then you need advanced math. And I can tell you this, very few people write their own algorithms, right? Everybody, like 90, 90 95% of the people, we use existing algorithms, 
right? You could be a PhD, you could be, right? You could be a, a software engineer. Most of us end up using the algorithms, right? To use that, we can, we can do pretty well, right? Uh, with our understanding math. Again, you know, I don't want to dissuade you from learning math. You know, you can pick up any textbooks, right? And they will, you know, they will do a, give you a good math treatment. But to start, you don't need to start with the math. Math, so sort of, I'm thinking more like a bonus or advanced topic, right? Let's say you'll understand some deep learning algorithms and now you're curious, okay, how is the algorithm working? Then go look at a textbook, right? They will give you the underlying math, right? So I will not start with math, uh, especially when you're learning this, right? So yeah, so yeah, so again, I'm not discounting the math, uh, but all I'm saying is we, to, is to get familiar with the algorithm and start using the algorithms, we don't need to start with math, right? That's all, yeah? Because I always get in trouble you know, when the math patients say, oh no, how can you discount math? So I'm not discounting it. I'm just saying, maybe not start with the, as a first step, right? Yeah, so, um, right. So a uh, question is like, uh, um, how, do, how do you sort of, you know, define these, you know, right? You know, define these, you know, um, skills, right? Kind of like, you know, remember, uh, machine learning, big data, cloud DevOps. And as you can see, there are some of them kind of overlap, right? I kind of draw this Venn diagram, I mean, not for scale, like for example, if you know big data, you probably know a little bit of the clouds, right? If you know if you know cloud, you probably know some DevOps. So there are some cross um, you know uh, cross pollination going on with these subjects. Um, but you know, basically to me, uh, what I look at is like this, right? The simple thing is, can you can you develop some basic model, and can you take it all the way to production, right? And what are the skills do you need? So for example, right, to deploy this model, like you only need to know maybe like ten percent of Kubernetes. Right. That's so. That's all we you know start with, right? And then you know when you need to need more detail, then you sort of get good at Kubernetes, right? So that's why I always recommend you know as you be project focused. Okay, like you're like I'm here, I need to get here, right? So what are the basics I need? And let's say you know you learn the basics to you know get you from A to B, and then if you need a little bit more detail, then you sort of do go deep dive, right? So that that's the most effective way I've seen. You know um, I learn and people learn. Because if you start deep diving on one subject, you know you could spend you know spend like a month learning Kubernetes, right? All the not the, you know all the little details, but most likely you you may not need this for your first project, right? So be be focused, right? Don't get sidetracked by learning, you know, getting to you know getting you know getting too deep into one subject. Learn as you go, right? That's what I recommend. So, um, question is, um, um, how the job market again? So the so the the, the one I showed you guys is basically the job title I showed you guys is right. Where are we? Yeah. So these are you know you know I you know I live in San Jose. Can I so I query using San Jose, but I'm seeing this popping up um, all over the place. So machine learning engineer is a new job description I'm seeing. Uh, just like you know there was a job description like data engineer. Remember there's a data engineer. You know we didn't have data engineers ten years ago. It's a new phenomenon, and we didn't have machine learning engineers five years ago. Right, this is a new thing, right? So that's why it's it's a good up and coming space for you guys to get get going. And trust me, there are um, a lot of the companies they want to learn more machine learning engineers than data scientists, right? So, um, and as you can see, I mean, if you just do a quick search for you know on any job site, you will see a lot of people are hiring on machine learning engineers, like you know, it's all over the spectrum, right? So. Right, so question is like, I, I'm a DBA, I wanna learn machine learning. How do we, how do we go about this? Um, check, start with the guide, right? At, at least it'll at least, at least kind of give you a, a kind of a very defined path you can go through, right? And then if you have any questions, you know, shoot me an email, my contact is there in the guide, right? So you can shoot, shoot me an email. I think that'll help you out, yeah. Um, so my email is here, guys, right? You can shoot me an email. So if you go to the, um, you know, go to the page, right? My email's right here, right? Um, so again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting up this, um, the, the link page here so everybody can say, everybody can see it, right? Yeah, so if you go to the page, my, and my email is here as well. Right? Feel free to shoot me an email anytime. All right, guys, let me run through, run through questions real quick. Right, um, are there big data sets available online? Very good, that's a great question, right? So <laughs> when you're learning machine learning, data is a big problem, right? How do you, how do you get the data? So in the guide, so I, I made, made, a, made, a, made a point of um, putting a, a section for data, right? So take a look at the data section. Uh, there are some resources. Uh, a lot of the data sets are gonna be small, right? I'll be, I'll be frank with you. But there are some big data sets, right? 
And these data sets are usually um, hosted on the cloud vendors. For example, let's say you're on Amazon. Amazon hosts their own data sets. So this way, you know, you don't have to, you're, you don't incur bandwidth for downloading a large data set, right? Google hosts their own data sets. So the links are here. You can go and sort of find out and you can sort by size and everything, right? For example, you know, if you go to UCI and K, you know, Kaggle is pretty, you know, pretty good data set, right? So, sorry, let me go back here, right? Kaggle data sets, right? And Kaggle has tons of data sets. And you, you can look at the size, right? And they have like a size filter or something like this, right? Um, and then you can pick the big data sets. I will also check your cloud vendors because they have large data set they host, right? especially, yeah. So especially now, um, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. So somebody already mentioned, thank you, Karen. Yeah, mentioning yeah, exactly, right? Kaggle has a lot of the um, data sets available, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, example project, right? So uh, that's a good question. Um, I am going to be adding some example projects that you can do on your own uh, into the guide. Uh, so the guide is actually work in progress right now. So you know, right, I said, I, as, I'm, as I'm teaching this class and kind of, you know, I'm updating the guide as we go along. Uh, so keep an eye on this one. Uh, I will, I'll be adding some um, sample projects because the, my current cohort is going to do a sample project soon. Right? So I'll add some examples. Yeah, very good guys. So uh, let's see, let's see, let's see what else. Um, right, so this course basically, right? So this learning path, so the way we are running this, this is a weekly class, right? So this is basically a self-paced class. We meet every week on Saturdays to review the content and answer any questions, right? So, so you're kind of learning self-paced, but I, I do this meeting to answer your questions on a weekly basis, right? So the, the class is running for like almost 10 weeks. I think it will go for another maybe five, six weeks, I think, right? Uh, yeah, so you can join. And you know, you can, you know, like I said, all, everything we are following is in the guide. Just a weekly meeting you can attend if you want to sort of, you know, um, see you know, where others are and ask questions, things like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's, it's a weekly meeting. It'll go till probably end of the year, I would imagine. Yeah, so good guys. Um, yeah, so the slides you can download again, you know, I'll put this link up. So if you go to the link, you can download the slides. And all the books and you know, right? You can download the PDF slide and you know all the books and everything. All the links are there, right? So I'll I'll, I'll keep this page up. So this is the link. This is the only link you guys need, and everything is there. All right. Uh, so uh, if you people say if I signed up for the um, guided machine learning, but I didn't see the Zoom invite link. Uh, check your uh, check your Eventbrite email. Uh, at the bottom, there's like a there should be a link. Uh, and then if you, if you have any issues, um, shoot me an email. I will send you the right link, right? But it should be part of the Eventbrite sign up letter. When you sign up, you know how you say, welcome to yada, 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 you get that, yeah? So it should be in there. If not, you know, shoot me an email, I'll help you, right? All right, guys, so let's see. Um, all right, let's look at chat window real quick as well. Um, right, so, are there any specific way of doing this in like AWS or SageMaker? For example, one of the books, right? And, and that's why the books are, I recommend the books, right? For example, the data science on AWS, right? And then, you know, a deep learning guide for cloud. These things really walk you through how to do some of these things in the specific cloud. And these books are just starting to come out. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a good, you know, and, and some of them have like online samples you can read and or, or like an advanced version you can actually purchase, right? Yeah, so definitely. And, and a lot of the time you will actually end up going to the um, the cloud windows page and follow their guides because this whole thing is new, right? People are still just, just kind of coming to terms with all this. Yeah. So if you like say, if you say, how do we do this in SageMaker? How do we do this in Google Cloud? Right? A lot of the time you'll actually have to go and read the online documentation because books are just coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Thank you, John. <laughs> I appreciate this. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, all right, guys. I think that's all the questions. Let me see if I missed anything. Uh, Saturdays we meet at eleven Pacific, right? So eleven AM Pacific. Uh, you know, because we have people coming from you know a lot of different time zones, so that seems to be the good time zone for us to meet. Uh, yeah. So when you sign up, you will get the link, and and the link will have all the details, right? So uh, a lot of people, you know, like I said, I encourage you, you can join at any time. But if you need to catch up, right? So this week we are doing catch up, right? So kind of a catch up week because um, you know we all get busy, right? People get busy, you know, work, life, kids. So uh, so it's kind of running on a weekly basis. 
Good guys, I think I answered all the questions here. Any other questions? Either, you know, you can type them in the chat window or, you know, put them in a Q&A panel. I think I've gone through all of them. So guys, we are pretty much, we are only 10 minutes left. So let me do this. Please come, you know, go to this page, right? This is where all the, um, all the resources are, right? And you can sign up. If you have any question, you can shoot me an email. Uh, we will send out the recording of this um, um, soon, you know, once it's, when it's ready. Uh, yes, this is a free course we are running right now. So the weekly course is a free course. The guided machine learning, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But also, you know, I'll, 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 you know, make this right. So the way the course is being running, guys, is like you do a lot of reading, right? I mean, so we give you like a lot of pointers. So you, you know, you will actually go and do a lot of reading. We actually give you exercises, right? For example, you know, right here's like SVM, for example, right? So I give you reading material. You got to go read through them, right? You have a checklist to check your knowledge, and also exercises. Right, so, so this is not like you know. So I'm not. I'm definitely not like spoon feeding you on this one. Basically, my my job on this one is like more like a guide, right? So um, you'll basically um, get as much as time, you know, as much as you put in. So a lot of people I have, you know, they spend a lot of time kind of reading through the materials, right? Uh, some of them will do like exercises. Most of them actually even do bonus labs as well, right? Like I said, the more time you invest, right? it's all about practice, practice, practice. Right? So this is not like a you know like a watching a video. <laughs> Kind of thing. So our goal is when we meet this meet on Saturday is we actually review labs, we answer questions, like very focused learning. Right. So yeah, just be aware of this more like a self-learning. I am more of a facilitator, right? Yeah. So that's how the course is running. And it's been pretty successful. Like a lot of people like the format. And also, you know, I mean sometimes, you know, some weeks people fall behind, like because of work and whatever, and they can catch up, right? Because then everything is pretty much self-paced. So so yeah, check it, check out the format, right? Maybe you like it. And I know I have a bunch of people in the class right now and it's going pretty well. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we are kind of, you know, right? Exactly. We are kind of having you learn, right? And then more, I'm more of a, like a T8, like a teaching assistant, right? Kind of, you know, you come to ask questions and things like that. Yeah. Bulk of the work is done by you guys. Yeah. Good guys. So let's see, let's see, let's see. I think we covered everything. And again, if you, if you missed any, any questions, uh, apologies, um, please shoot me an email, right? Here's my email right here, right? Again, it's in the, in the page as well. Um, I'll put this link on the email as well, uh, the chat window. Yeah. And here's a final link. Cool guys, that's it. I think we are good we are there and we are done, done with this webinar. Again, if you have any questions, shoot me an email and here's a link one more time. Okay, to everybody. Cool. Thank you guys. Um, I hope you find this useful and I will see you in another webinar. Thank you.